MegCram.com. Welcome to another MegCram lecture. We're going to talk about e-valley or e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury. And this is an update based on the CDC's recent study that was released here at the early part of November. So up to this point, they've been looking at surveys. They've been talking to people. What we've actually got here are 29 bronchial alveolar lavage fluid from patients. So this is not survey. This is actual isolating chemicals that were in bronchial alveolar fluid. So how did they get that? They did a bronchoscopy and they went down into the lungs and they were actually able to wash and suction out the fluid that was in the alveolus, take it back, and then they were able to collect those and then analyze them. And they analyzed it for a number of different compounds. So what did they find? Now it's interesting. What they found in 100% of them, and this is going to be the smoking gun perhaps, in 100% of the samples in these patients who were sick, in 29 of the 2,000 so far at this point, they found vitamin E acetate. Now, interestingly, in 82% of the samples that they got, they found THC, and in 62% of the samples, they found nicotine. Now, there was a lot of speculation leading up to this that it was the vitamin E that might have been causing all of these things because people have been vaping for years without this E Valley issue coming up. And so there was thought that a lot of the black market products, which had the vitamin E in it, were the actual cause for the problem. But we didn't know for sure. And this is why the CDC was tasked into investigating this and holding back on making that judgment until they were absolutely sure. Now, in this case, all we have is 100% association. Association doesn't always mean causation, but it certainly is the first step. Now, vitamin E acetate is fine for oral ingestion into the stomach, but nowhere was it safe or said to be safe for inhaling it. Vitamin E is a very sticky oil and it can accumulate. And again, 100% of these patients that they got the 29 samples on were positive for vitamin E acetate. Now, what was it not positive for? So interesting things that they did not find in there were plant oils, petroleum distillates like mineral oil, um, MCT oil, or terpenes. So where do you see this vitamin E acetate containing vape or e-cigarette products found? They found them from friends, from family, in person, or online dealers. So that's the ones that you've got to be careful about. Now just realize that the time of this update is the beginning of November, specifically on November 5th, 2019. The epidemic is up to 2,051 cases of e -Valley, and up to 39 people in the United States have died as a result of this problem. So what does the CDC recommend at this point? Well, they recommend not buying any kind of vape products from the street. They recommend not buying any vape products that have THC in it. And they recommend not buying any modified vape products. And of course, if you've got a child or you know of a child that's less than 18, they shouldn't be vaping, period. And if you really want to be absolutely sure, the best way to do it is not to vape or smoke at all, because there is no vape or smoke product that is 100% safe. The FDA recommends using an FDA approved method of smoking cessation. And if you're not smoking, don't go back to smoking either. And if you are going to vape, remember this, it's pretty obvious that you could have respiratory complaints. Be particularly concerned if you have signs of nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, or fever, because it is these complaints along with respiratory symptoms that makes e -Valley of particular concern. And if you like this video and you want to see more educational videos, I encourage you to go to medcram.com where we have videos that teach you about chest x-rays, ABGs, acid base, pneumonia, asthma, COPD, pulmonary function tests, and a whole host of other topics. Thanks for joining us.